All right, everybody, welcome back to another episode of Fallen Flags of America. So to give you all some context, I know it's been a little bit since I've done an episode, and I apologize for that. I've just had some bit, some stuff going on on the schedule where it's been kind of hectic, and I haven't really felt like doing some videos. I kind of need a break from doing like the usual Fallen Flag videos, but it's great to be back. I'm glad to be back, actually. And, uh, yeah. Let's uh, get this episode started. So, today's episode will be covering the EMD F units, which was a series of locomotives produced between November of 1939 to November of 1960 by EMD, or Gen at the time, General Motors Electromotive Division and General Motors Diesel Division of Canada, or GMD. The EMDF units are a line of diesel electric locomotives, as previously stated, produced between November 1939 and, 6, and 1960, respectively, by General Motors Electromotive Division and General Motors Diesel Division. Final assembly for all locomotives was completed at the GM EMD plant at LaGrange, Illinois, if they were built in, Amer in America, which makes it an EMD. <clears throat> and the GMD plant in London, London, Ontario. This would mean if they were built in Canada as a GMD locomotive. They were sold to railroads throughout the United States, Canada, Mexico, and a few were exported to Saudi Arabia. The term F refers to the model numbers given to each successive type, such as EMD F3, F7, F9, and so on all of which began with the letter F. The F originally meant 14th, as in 1,400 horsepower, not freight. Longer EMDE units for passenger service had twin 900 horsepower diesel engines called prime movers in that type of application. The EMD meant 18th, as in 1,800 horsepower, similarly, similarly for the EMD early EMD switchers, which meant 600 and M meant 900, 400 and 50, 760 kilowatts, respectively. F units were originally designed for freight service, although many without steam generators or steam heating passenger cars pulled short distance, mainly daytime passenger trains. Some carriers even equipped small numbers of their Fs with steam generators for long haul passenger service. On the other hand, the Santa Fe maintained a large fleet of fully equipped high-speed EMD F3s and F7s in war bonnet paint schemes built exclusively for top-tier trains, such as the Super Chief, the Chief, and the El Capitan. Excuse me, I had to get a drink there. Almost all five units were BB locomotives, meaning they ran on two Bloom Blomberg B, two axle trucks with all axles powered. This means they were four axle locomotives. The prime mover in F units was a 16 cylinder EMD 567 series mechanically aspirated two stroke diesel engine progressing from the model 16 cylinder 567 through the 16 cylinder 567D. Structurally, the locomotive was a car body unit with the body as the main, main, main lobe bearing structure, designed like a bridge truss and covered with cosme cosmetic panels. The so-called bulldog nose was a distinguishing feature of the locomotive's appearance and made a, lo a lasting impression in the mind of a traveling public. The F units were most successful were the most successful first generation main road, main line, diesel locomotives in North America and were largely responsible for su 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 superseding steam locomotives and road service before them. Before that, diesel locomotives were mostly built as switcher locomotives and only used in yards. F units were sometimes known as cover wagons due to the sim similarity in appearance of the roof of an F unit to the canvas roof of a Conestoga wagon, an animal-drawn wagon used in the westward expansion 
of the United States during the late 18th and 19th centuries. When locomotives on a train included the only F units, the train would then be called a wagon train. Two uses were still popular with the, the two uses are still popular for railfan community. Models. So, we have several models to go over in this episode. We will first start with the EMD's first model, the EMD-FT. The EMD-FT is a 1,350 horsepower diesel electric locomotive that was produced between March of 1939 and November 1945 by General Motors Electromotive Corporation, EMC, later known as Electromotive Division. The F stood for 1,400 horsepower, 1,400, and the T for twin as it came in a two-unit set. The design was equipped from the TA model built for the Rock Island in 1937 and was similar in, in cylinder count, axle count, length, and layout. All, to all told, 550 cab A, A units were built, with 541 cabless booster or B units for a grand total of just over a thousand locomotives. The locomotives were, were all were, were all sold to customers in the United States. It was the first model in EMD's very successful F unit series of cab unit freight diesels, and was the first locomotive that that convinced many U.S. railroads that the diesel electric freight locomotive was the future. Many rail historians consider the FT one of the most important locomotive models of all time. So if we go on down to the FT. So we go to original buyers. Electromotive Division, or EMD, had two of them. Uh, they were demonstrator locomotives, number 103 and 103A. The Atchison, Topeka, and Santa Fe Railroad, or commonly known as Santa Fe, had one, and bear in mind, I should mention that if I say different numbers, this is referring to the amount of A units and B units. EMD had four units, two A units and two B units. These were, these were number 103, 103A, 103B, and 103A. All, all of these units, I do believe, well, I know at, at least two of them out of the set of four are still around today and in the hands of a collector. I can't remember which. Anyways, the Santa Fe have 155A units and 165B units. They number from 100 to 104, 105 to 104. Santa Fe locomotives were numbered in the 100 series. We'll just say that between 100 to 179. Nearly all of these units were later renumbered. The Atlanta coastline had 24, 24A units and 24B units, numbered 300 to 323. The, B, the Baltimore and Ohio had 12 A and B units. They were numbered 1, 1A to 11A. The Boston and Maine had 24 A and B units, numbers 4200 to 4223A 40, and 4200B to 4223B. The Chicago Northwestern had 8, 8 A, well, 4A units and 4B units, Numbers uh, 54A, 54D, 5401, and 5401D. The B units were numbered 5400B, 5400B, 5400C, 5401B, and 54C, 5401C. The Burlington, or Chicago, Burlington, and Quincy Railroad had 32A and B units. Number 100A, 100D, to 115A and 115D. The Chicago, Milwaukee, St. Paul, and Pacific Railroad, or Milwaukee Road, had 26A units and 26B units, ranging from 35A, 35D, uh, to 47A and 47D. 
The Chicago Northwestern had 20 A units and 16 B units. Number 70, 70A, 70, 73, 73A, 88 to 89. The B units were numbered 70B to 73B and 88A to 99A. The Delaware, Lackawanna, and Western, commonly known as the Lackawanna, had 12 A units and 8 B units. These were numbered 601A, 601C, to 601, 603A, 603C, 651A, to 654A. The B units were numbered 601B to 604B, 651B to 654B. The Denver and Rio Grande Western, the Rio Grande, had 24A units and 24B units. For the sake of this video, I'm not going to say the numbers. The Erie Railroad had 12A units and 12B units. The Great Northern had 51A units and 45B units. The Lehigh Valley had 8 units, 4A units, and 4B units. The Minneapolis and St. Louis Railway had 4A units and 2B units. The Missouri Pacific had 12A units and 12B units. The New York Central had 4A units and 4B units. The Chicago, Ontario, and Western had 9A units and 9B units. The Northern Pacific had 22A units and 22B units. The Reading had 10A units and 10, 10B units. The St. Louis Southwestern Railway had 10A units and 10, 10B units. The Seaboard, Airway, Seaboard Airline Railway had 22A units and 22B units. The Southern Railway had 36A units and 28B units and the Western Pacific had 24A units and 24B units. Surviving units. Most, most EMDFT locomotives survive today. They include the lead A unit from Demonstrator No. 103 at the Museum of Transportation of St. Louis, Missouri. The original A unit was presented to the museum in June, June 22, 1961 at a ceremony. The Virginia Transportation Museum currently owns a B unit, which was on loan to the Museum of Transportation from 2015 to 2020. Both units are cosmetically restored and painted to the original GM demo paint scheme. However, only the A unit is from the original demo set. The two B units and the other A unit were eventually scrapped after years of service. The B unit now on display at Roanoke, originally just a random FTB unit, was later stripped of its engine and other locomotive parts and converted to a boiler car. It went to the museum in Virginia. In, in 1989, this former FTB unit, as well as the genuine demonstrator A unit from St. Louis, were repainted in the EMD demo colors for a celebration at EMD's McCook, Illinois plant, often described by mailing address as LaGrange, for the 50th anniversary of the FT. They toured together and then they were returned to their respective owners. One FTA unit, FSB, FSBC 2203A, on display in Mexico, was originally built for the Northern Pacific Railway. Three B units from the Southern Railway are preserved. Number 960604 is at the Southeastern Railway Museum in Duluth, Georgia. 960602 is in the Conway, South Carol is in Conway, South Carolina, and 960603 is at the Museum of Transportation in St. Louis, Missouri. That covers the EMDFT. Hang on a sec while I get us back here. Here we go. So the F unit. Hang on, models. Okay, so we have the EMD F2s, which were built in 1946. Um, we have the EMD F3s, which were built from 46 to 49. EMD F7s, which were built from 49 to 53. The FP7, which was a locomotive meant for freight and passenger service of that model. 1949 to 53, the EMD F9, 1953 to 1960, 
the FP9 1954 to 1959, and the FL9 1956 to 1960. Had to get another drink there. I'm sorry if that interrupted the video. So, model improvement. The FT entered. The FT and introduced in 1939 with the new 1,350 horsepower 567 engine, <clears throat> and Blomberg B B trucks was a successful design, and remained in production during World War II. It was the only diesel locomotive probably built in the Second World War. The EMDF-3, introduced in 1946, had a different roof arrangement and included the replacement of the FT's boxy dynamic brake structure with two under-roof grids, two exhaust stacks instead of four, and four cooling fans grouped together instead of separ separated pairs of cooling fans. The F3 was also two feet longer than the FT, to allow standard draft gear to be installed at the rear of the unit. The 567B engine was uprated to 1,500 horsepower. Some F3s were nicknamed chicken wire for the type of engine room air intake structure along the sides. The F7 in 1949 and F9 1954 were evolutionary. The F7 had improved traction motors, the F9 a 1,750 a horsepower 567 engine, a louver arrangement over the vents changed their appearance from the F3. <clears throat> they were also four feet longer with well, they were also four, four four foot longer versions, the FP9 and the FP FP7 and FP9. The extra length being used to house a tank for extra water capacity. Only one F did not have Blombird trucks. The FL9 had a lightweight flexi-coil B in the front and a standard A1A at the rear. Model, descri model descriptions are built as EM are spilt, but EMC slash EMD locomotives are often rebuilt to newer standards. An article by Chris Goss on page 10 of the May 2014 issue of Trains Magazine concerns freight and current use of the EMDF unit. So, it can be said that the EMDF series was a very evolutionary series, providing for several innovations throughout EMD's history as a locomotive builder. Now, back to the, back to the picture of the video. A picture of the video today... Uh, See, here we see the legendary Norfolk Southern OCS F units in their one-of-a-kind Norfolk Southern black, white and blue, white and black paint scheme with the fit, with the signature gold striping. These F units were actually built for the B and O sometime in the fifties, I think, as F sevens. I'm pretty sure, and were and were later purchased by the Kansas City Southern Railway. And then later, they sold them to the Norfolk Southern Railroad. The Norfolk Southern took them in and rebuilt them from the ground up and rebuilt them as FP9As. So essentially, it's an FP, it's an F7, but rebuilt to FP9 specs. Anyway, these locomotives were, were unveiled in 2014. No, I take that back. They may have been unveiled in 2014. 11 I want to say and they were placed on e on their OCS train or office car special train these locomotives remained in that job until 2020 when Norfolk Southern's precision schedule railroading philosophy put them all out of service however all of them were preserved thankfully with two going to the Reading Blue Mountain and Northern Railway and the other two went to a short line somewhere, I think, in the Carolinas or Virginia. Uh, don't really know much on where the other two went, but I do know at least two of them went to the Reading Blue Mountain and Northern, who's repainted them to a beautiful black, red, and white paint scheme. 
now the OCS still runs with standard equipment, but no longer has the famed black ladies to pull it, as rail fans called them, myself included. I was never lucky enough to catch the EMD FP9s in service on Norfolk Southern, but I wish I was. Back then, I wasn't really into trains as, as much as I am now, and um, I just really wish I could have caught them because uh, I had a... I have a YouTuber I watch uh, called Trains21. Go, I highly advise you go check him out after you're done watching this video. And he says in his videos, or used to anyway, always catch it while you can today because you don't know if it will be here tomorrow. And that could not be more correct with these F units because they kind of stuck around for a good bit and then they're put out of service all because of a stupid business philosophy. Now that's just my opinion. If you'd like to hear me, my thoughts on on uh, PSR, I'll do a video on it sometime in the future. But um, and telling me again, somewhere out there in the high iron, this has been Vaughn Flags of America with your host Alan M Productions. Over and out.